Hey guys, Jacqueline here, and welcome to part 20 of how to make a 2D RPG in Unity. In this video, we're going to be going over some theory that we're going to need to refactor the inventory. I've decided to go ahead and refactor the inventory and other parts of the game before we move forward, setting up any more uh, mechanics, because I've noticed that our code's getting a little bit spaghetti, and it's going to be really difficult to continue to set things up as we move forward. So I like to get these changes out of the way as soon as possible. So it's easier for us uh, as we keep making this game. All right, so what we're gonna be doing to refactor our inventory is we're going to make the inventory a component so that we can put it on any game object in the world. This will allow us to give the player an inventory and then give a chest an inventory and then give the shop owner an inventory um, and that's just going to make it really easy for us to, to do lots of different things, like picking up an item. Anything that has an inventory, we might want to allow to pick up an item. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start making these changes. Um, and then we're actually going to be using events to trigger updating the inventory UI. And I think that this is the more important bit of our refactor. Right now we've got that like clunky UI manager and the inventory UIs and it's very, it's just a lot going on and it's not very easy to understand. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of a lot of that code that we did and set things up using events. And this is going to allow us to instantly update the UI anytime we pick up an item. So currently, you might have noticed that if you walk into an item while your inventory is open, it doesn't necessarily refresh your inventory. And you could fix that with a, just a call to the refresh function. Um, but doing it this way will allow us to walk into something with our inventory open, it trigger the event, and then the inventory automatically update upon the inventory changing. So that's going to make things a lot more responsive for our players and just a little bit less spaghetti-y as we continue to move forward. All right, so let's go over some theory that we're going to need to cover um, as we start to get into this event-driven design. All right, so the first thing that you should know is that this pattern that we're going to be using with events is called the observer design pattern. And essentially what the observer design pattern does is it allows a subscriber to register and receive notifications from a provider. All right, that's some you know, jargon there. So let's like, break that down and understand what exactly that means. Um, so the pattern defines a provider, uh, which is the object that will send out the notification to the observers. And the observers are just the objects that are listening for the notification from the provider. So essentially how this works, the observer is going to register with the provider. They're going to say, hey, I'm listening to this event. And then something's going to happen, like a condition or an event or some sort of state change that's going to trigger the provider to send out a notification to all observers saying, OK, that changed. And the observers will then take that information and do whatever they need to do. In our case, we're going to be um, triggering this event when we pick something up for our inventory. So if we add something to our inventory or re we remove something for our inventory. So anytime our inventory changes. So our provider will be the inventory and our observers is going to be our inventory UI script. And the inventory is going to say, hey, something got added or something got removed, something got changed. Uh, just so you know, do what it, do with that what you will. And then the inventory UI script will say, okay, cool. The, inventor the inventory changed. Let's refresh the UI and update it so that the UI matches our inventory. Okay. And then an additional thing that we can do when we're dealing with events is we can also provide additional information from our provider that will help the observer, you know, do, do something. So in our case, for our inventory, we're going to have to tell the um, observers what happened, like what changed. Otherwise, we won't be able to update the UI appropriately. And the reason that we're going to be using this pattern is because it supports the clean separation between two different components. 
Um, so that means our inventory UI won't need to know necessarily about our, our inventory after we you know, subscribe to the event. Um, and then our inventory won't know anything that's happening um, after it sends out that event. So it doesn't know who's listening to it or anything like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about events. So what is an event? An event is a message that is sent um, by an object to signal the occurrence of an action. The action can be caused by some user interaction, such as a button click, or it can result from some programming logic that we create ourselves. So this could be changing a property value, or in our case, adding or removing an object from our inventory. So the object that raises the event is called the event sender. The event sender does not know which object or method will receive or handle its, the events that it raises. So the event is typically a member of the event sender. Um, so for example, uh, in our case, the change event here is a part of our inventory. And the um, on change function is a part of our inventory as well. All right. So to define an event, we will be using the C sharp events keyword in the signature of our event class. And we're going to specify the type of delegate uh, delegate for the event. And um, we're going to go over delegates in just a minute. All right. But typically to raise an event, you'll add a method that is marked as protected and virtual. Um, and then the name of this method is on and then the event name. So you can see in our example, our event name is change. And then our um, function here says on change. Right. And then this event or this method should take just one parameter, which specifies our event data um, object which is an object of the type event args, or um, we could set up custom event data, which would then inherit from the event args class. Um, so you'll provide this method to enable derive classes. So that way, if we had a, another type of inventory, like let's say our toolbar, which inherits from our inventory, we would actually have access to this method and we could call it um, and implement some sort of logic when we want to call it inside of that child class. All right, so a derived class um, should always call the on and then whatever the event name is method of the base class to ensure that the registered delegates receive the event. Okay, so then we have delegates. So what is a delegate? A delegate is a type that holds a reference to a method. A delegate is declared with a signature that shows the return type and the parameters for the method that it references. And it can hold references only to the methods that match its signature. Um, so a delegate is thus equivalent to a type safe function pointer or a callback. So delegate declaration is sufficient to define a delegate class. So here, on our example, in our um, on change event, we have our delegate defined as event handler. Um, so delegates have a lot of different uses in the .NET um, framework, but in the context of events, a delegate is an intermediary um, between an event source, like our inventory, and the code that handles the event, which would be our inventory UI. So you can associate a delegate with an event by including the delegate type in the event declaration. Um, and then as shown in our example here, um, our event delegate is the event handler. Okay, so .NET does provide the event handler and event handler uh, generic, which um, uh, generic delegates to support most event scenarios so if we don't want to include any additional information with our event when we raise it, we'll just use our event handler delegate. And then if we do want to include any additional information, we can use the event handler generic um, delegate for uh, passing that information to the uh, listeners. So these delegates have no return type values and they take two parameters, um, which is the object 
of like who's sending the event and then also the event data. So um, delegates are multicast, which means that they can hold references to more than one event handling method. So basically what that means is we can have more than one class or function that gets called when this event occurs. So we might have both the inventory UI and the toolbar UI listening for the same event. And both of those like the, both of those two separate functions will get called when this event um, gets fired. All right, so for scenarios where the event handler and event handler delegates don't work, we can actually define our own delegates. Um, we won't really be doing any of that in our project, at least not yet. Um, but you can do it. So if you find the situation where you need to define your own type of event, event handler, you could totally do that. Um, but those titans that you would need it are very rare. So you might not ever <laughs> come across a moment when you need to do that. Um, okay. So next we've got our event data. So this is the data that is associated with an event, which can be provided through the event data class. So in .NET, um, they provide many different types of event data classes that we can use in our application. Um, for example, we have the serial data, serial data received event args class um, for the serial port data received event, which we won't be using. Um, but we can create our very own event um, args, which is custom classes, which inherit directly from the event args base class. Um, but it is important to remember that .NET does have a naming pattern that we will be following. Um, typically, when you create your very own custom event args, you'll use the name of the thing, like the event or the class that's, you know, triggering the or raising the event, uh, followed by the words event args. So in our case, we might say inventory event args because, um, these are the arguments for our inventory. And you can even go more specific with that if you need to. Like you might want to do inventory changed event args if the information that you're going to be passing is different than like, let's say, uh, like, inven like inventory created or inventory destroyed. Um, so you could totally set up many different types of event args and many different types of events. Um, so if you are calling in a, or if you're raising an event that doesn't need to pass any information, um, we won't be creating these. We'll just use the built in event args class. And, um, if you don't need even that, you can just, uh, there's this thing called event args dot empty, which you can pass, uh, in when you call your invoke your delegate. All right. Um, so, Next, we've got event handlers, um, and event handlers are the thing that responds to our event. Um, so in order to respond to an event, we will need to define an event handler method inside of our event receiver. So in our inventory example, our inventory will send out the on change event, and our um, inventory UI script, for example, might have a listener in there with a on inventory change function that will that will get called when we uh, trigger that event. Um, so in the event handler, uh, it needs to match the signature of the event that we created. So for event handler events, it needs to have a parameter of object, which is the sender of the event. Um, so this would be our inventory. And then we also need to have an event args. Um, so this could be the base class or it could be a custom one depending on how you set up your event. All right. Um, and that is pretty much everything that we need to know about events. Um, in our next video, we are going to be setting up and implementing the changes in our inventory uh, to start using these events and getting our UI to update automatically. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell if you want to receive a notification when my next video goes live. 
Um, if you haven't already, you can join our Discord, but you can find the link in the description below. The Discord is a great place to meet other developers just like you who are starting out in Unity or also some Unity pros in there. And it's an awesome place to just talk to other developers and get feedback, ask questions, help each other out. We are a learning community and it's so much more fun to learn with your friends. And I also have a Patreon. If you haven't already, check that out. The link will also be in the description below. Um, anything that you guys can uh, provide to help me out with that would be awesome. Uh, the more people I get on Patreon, uh, the more time I can spend on my videos because I won't need to you know, be working a full-time job necessarily. And I can spend a lot more time getting these videos out and getting this content to you guys faster. All right. So thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.